Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is going to be a video on the Lone Walker from season two, episode 10, and it then reoccurred in the intros. Who was this Walker? Was he an important Walker? Was he a Walker we'd seen before? And who was the actor and the intention behind it? And what did it mean in the show? I'm going to let you know all of that in this video. It was season two, episode 10, and both times as Rick, Randall, and Shane drove to and from Merck County, Shane spots this walker roaming in the field, making him think about stuff that had just happened. So now I want to go to a blog page called TalkingWalkingDead.com, but I think the person that wrote it out did a very good job. So I'm going to read what's written here. There's a link in the description. The Lone Walker is a cold, distant figure moving through an empty field. We see it as Shane does, gazing through a car window, sitting next to the man who should be his best friend, following a day filled with regrettable actions. It is far enough away to make distinguishing any features impossible. The Lone Walker is anonymous and unknowable, but it is difficult to not feel sadness rather than fear while gazing upon it. This is a mirror for what Shane has become. He has finally been told, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that Rick's family is just that ricks he has relentlessly beat on the man he calls brother he has attempted to murder two people and subsequently been rescued by them both when shane is looking upon the lone walker he feels a kinship he was alone before but it is painfully obvious now that there are so few people in the world he has no more purpose than a mindless corpse shuffling through the dying grass this moment in the car is perhaps the first time we see shane look utterly defeated in what is a moment of synergy, the song playing over this crisis of mind is Civilian by Y. Oak. I don't need another friend when most of them I can barely keep up with. I'm perfectly able to hold my own hand, but I still can't kiss my own neck. And man, that's, that's some deep lyrics right there as far as a uh, verse in a song, man, and so true. The blog goes on to say, In a different man, this may have been the turning point back to humanity. However, like the lone walker, Shane will not remain an object of pity for long. He has become a creature driven by survival and possession. The enormity and emotions of the day in 18 Miles Out tapped him out. That season 2, episode 10's title, 18 Miles Out. But his slide into something less than human began long before and shows no sign of stopping. Once he has a chance to regroup, Rick's claiming of Lori, Carl, and the baby will be taken as a gauntlet thrown, and Shane's efforts to wrestle control of the group will be renewed with a sense of vigor. The Lone Walker is not merely a lonely traveler. The Lone Walker is the harbinger of the threat of walkers to come and the danger of Shane's continuing deterioration. It is the calm before the storm, and the sky is starting to look awfully cloudy. I mean, I couldn't have said it better myself. That's like poetic stuff right there, man. So kudos to whoever wrote this. I'm not sure there was a name on it, but the website itself, TalkingWalkingDead.com, and I left a link to that blog down in the description below. What was the meaning of the lone walker? Shane, looking out the window, he had just left. You know, they'd stopped in the road, and Rick said, Dude, look, it's this is how it's going to be right here. What I'm saying right now, that's my family, not yours. It ends at this moment, you know, that's it. And pretty much they had been fighting, right, um, over Randall, over things, over Lori, just the building up of all of that tension between the two, uh, two guys that used to be brothers. And Shane looks out the window and sees this lone walker walking through the field. He sees himself. So who was the actor that played the lone walker? And I always thought it was Greg Nicotero. He do, he plays so many other walkers and zombies and, and things. He does so much. But the lone walker was actually played by Jake Garber. And he is a special effects makeup artist that was on The Walking Dead. Much like the purple shirt walker in season one. Check out this video if you want to find out about him. He was an FX makeup artist as well. Just got to play a zombie. And same thing here. Jake Garber. Special effects makeup artist and a pretty good one at that. A pretty big name in the makeup effects uh, business. He's, he's done a ton of stuff. He works for Greg, but he's done a ton of stuff to his credit. 
A lot of people think the purple shirt walker is this walker out in the field, but it's not. It's not meant to be. It wasn't meant to be by the director or the writer of the show, uh, the showrunners. It's not meant to be the same walker. There's no story there. A lot of fans have connected the two because they have a jacket on, I guess. You know, they kind of um, have a suit on kind of thing. But they do have a behind the scenes connection that both of the people portraying these two walkers were makeup artists. In an article with Jake Garber, it was on uh, motionpictures.org, he was asked about doing effects and the realism of it and those kind of things. This is something cool that he said. For reference points, just about every special effects artist will start out looking at forensic books. That way we know what burns look like, what wounds look like. But even in that, we create the reality of what people think things are supposed to look like. For example, with a decapitated head, we all want it to look real with rosy cheeks and everything, but photos of actually decapitated heads don't look like that. They look fake. They look like they're made of wax because all the blood drains from the head. If we did that for film, people would say, that looks fake. So I think that's pretty cool. That's a cool article. I will link to it as well down in the description below. He also worked on Quentin Tarantino movies. He worked on Django Unchained, and he worked on Inglorious Bastards. Here's something he said about that. Tarantino is completely opposed to digital effects, to the point where, as a makeup artist, you really have to bring your A-game. When we did Inglorious Bastards, at the end of the movie, Kristoff gets the swastika carved in his forehead, and it would have been a perfect example to say, you know, let's do it this way, it's safer. But Quentin wants the real thing. And, of course, they applied some makeup over the top of his forehead to be able to do that they didn't really cut into his forehead jake gerber said i'm going to do the cutting i knew that it was a razor sharp knife and i knew that if we had any overzealous extra involved we would have lost our lead actor but no error at all it worked out well that was pretty much the toughest day on set i ever had and that's crazy tarantino come on dude think safety man but that's a good article with jake garber if you want to go read it but now you know. Now you know about the Lone Walker, what it meant, Shane, and, and what he just went through with Rick. He lost Rick. They just had a big fight, his loneliness and, and, and all of that. So now you know what it means. You know who it was as far as a walker. And we know that as a walker, there's just no story there really personally for the walker. It's just a symbol which reflects back on Shane. But now we know the actor that portrayed the walker and a little bit about him. That's it for this video. Let me know what you think about it down in the comments below and I'll join you there. And if you like the video and you're not subscribed, definitely subscribe to the channel. Check out, there's hundreds of videos on the channel, Walking Dead, everything. Just check it out. There's a lot there. This is James in Nashville. As always, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more dead stuff.